Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to have a look at energy transfer by design. And what that means is basically, when we are designing a product or something that we are going to use, we want to be able to control whether it's going to get hot really quickly or whether it's going to cool down. And that is basically governed by a number of different things. And these things will be factored into our design. Okay, so slightly different to the book, I'm going to have a look at these factors first, because I think really it's more important. So, factors which affect energy transfer are going to be the following. The first one is going to be the material that your uh, substance or your product is going to be made of. So, for example, you know that metal is a great conductor of heat, whereas something like cotton wool is not. That is more of an insulator. Polystyrene, that's more of an insulator. So the material is going to affect that energy transfer. The next one is going to be the actual physical mass of the object. So if you have something which is huge, it is going to transfer energy at a slower rate, really, to something that is much smaller. This, of course, depends on its surface area, and that's something that we're going to come on to next. But something that is really large is going to take more energy to heat up than something that is really small. And so, of course, more important than this is the surface area. Surface area. Now we've seen before in the evaporation video, condensation, um, and of course with the state of matter video as well, we've seen how surface area really does affect energy transfer. If you've seen the biology videos as well, this really does come up there and different animals are adapted to transfer heat at different rates. And one of the main factors is the surface area of the animal, or parts of the animal at least. Now, the surface area, if you have a large surface area, it means that more of your product is going to be exposed to its environment. That means it is going to transfer energy quicker. So that might mean that it's going to get hot quicker, depending on whether the surroundings are going to be hotter, or it's going to cool down quicker. If it's generating heat itself and it wants to cool down, then you might want a high surface area in order to allow the heat to be released. Okay, so in general, a higher surface area, so higher SA, equals higher or faster energy transfer. So energy being transferred. Like I say, that could be transferred to or from your product depending on its environment. Perfect. Okay, now another one is going to be materials. Materials in contact. So, for example, is our product going to be directly exposed to the air? Is it going to be in contact with something else which might be generating heat? Is it going to be in contact with another product? This is all going to dictate the level of energy transfer because, of course, the air, if we have a breeze, then we are going to have a lot of energy transfer because it's being carried away. Whereas if we are surrounded by polystyrene, polystyrene is a great insulator and so energy transfer is going to be greatly reduced. Okay, now finally, it's going to be the shape of an object. The shape of the object. Now this one's less obvious, I can't just say the higher the shape, the more energy transfer, because that doesn't make any sense. Now the shape of an object is going to vary the rate of energy transfer. One example is the shape can cause an increase in surface area. So these two are actually linked a lot of the time. But some shapes are just better at transferring energy than others. And I'll give you an example now. So let's say, for example, we have however long this is. Let's say that this is five meters across. And we have a surface, which I'm going to draw in green, which is going from one end to the other. And so if it goes directly from one end to the other, like so, that is going to have a certain surface area, okay? But what if we change the shape of it, so it's doing the same thing, but it looks like that. Now, this actually has a higher surface area because it's not taking the most direct route to from one point to another. That means energy transfer from this is going to be slightly higher. And finally, what if we had 
pretty direct, but like this. Like so, we're going to have these things, fins or waves or whatever you want to call them. Now this doesn't drastically go above or below the plane like the last one, but if we stretch this out straight, it will probably come to around about here. And so that means that the surface area there is going to be greatly increased. And that means that this is going to have the highest energy transfer, the highest rate of energy transfer out of those three designs. Okay, so there are factors affecting the rate of energy transfer, but how does that actually translate when we are de designing sorry, a product? Well, let's have a look at one now. Okay, so what we have here is of course a vacuum flask. Now, I'm sure you've seen these before, but they're very useful. You can either keep a cold drink really cold or you can keep a hot drink really hot. Vacuum flask. Okay. Now, there are loads of different design parts here and features which actually improve the efficiency of this flask. Here, we have a layer which contains a vacuum. Now, vacuum just means there's nothing in there whatsoever, not even any air in there. And what this does is it cuts out convection. Convection and it reduces uh, conduction. Obviously these are both energy transfer methods so this makes it a very good insulator because it also cuts the convection. Because convection requires a fluid in order to establish a convection current. So if we filled this in with air it would still be good at insulating but we would get convection so a vacuum is even better than air. Now this vacuum is surrounded by a double wall because we've got there and we have here. And this is normally made of plastic or glass. Now both plastic and glass are bad conductors. They're very good insulators. And this stops the um, movement of energy, of course, by conduction. Often they are silvered and if you remember back, a shiny, uh, bright surface is the best surface for reflection and therefore the worst surface for radiation. And we don't want to give off any heat as radiation. So this is good for reducing radiation also when we make it silver. Perfect. Okay, the outer layer in purple. So here and of course here as well. These are made of plastic. And that is, of course, to provide good amounts of insulation as well. This here is a cork. Now, a cork is not a good conductor either, so it's a very good insulator. And actually, almost all the materials here are made out of things which are good at insulating and bad at radiating uh, heat. And so that all allows heat to be stored or energy not to be transferred in or out. Because remember, if we have something cold, we're not stopping energy going out, we're stopping energy coming in. Whereas if we've got something really hot, we're trying to stop energy going out. And so this works both ways. It keeps things cold or it keeps things hot. Okay, and also, if you notice, the liquid itself, so this is going to be our liquid, whether it be hot or cold, whatever we want to drink out of it. Now this is going to... Um, reduce the amount of energy transfer as well because we have quite a low surface area. So these will normally make sure that they are quite wide and that the liquid um, container is obviously wide and allowing a low surface area. Whereas of course if it was much thinner there would be a higher surface area to volume ratio. And so the low surface area equals low energy transfer. I'm just going to write ET just because I haven't got room, but energy transfer. Okay, so there are loads of different components of this which um, reduce the amount of energy being transferred. There are more than I've mentioned as well. For example, this here is an insulating layer of air. I'll just shade that in so you can see it. This here is an insulating layer of air because it doesn't completely fill up. And so that also insulates the liquid inside and stops heat being given off. 
Um, all the springs and things like that and the little caps uh, where you can pour your liquid out of, they are all made of plastic rather than metal so that they don't emit radiation either and that they are insulating rather than conducting. Okay, now one final point I can make, which I can't stress enough, is that all of these reduce the rate of energy transfer. Okay, we've already mentioned that, so that might not sound like anything new, but let me stress, they do not stop energy transfer. Energy transfer is going to happen. It is just a law of physics. The energy transfer will happen eventually. Let's say you had a hot coffee in here. If you came back a week later, that coffee would not still be hot unless you had a fantastic vacuum flask. But then in a year, it won't be hot. So energy transfer will happen. What we're doing here is we're slowing it down and slowing it down because what we use a vacuum flask for is carrying around something that we have made earlier and we want to keep it at a certain temperature. So if you've made a coffee at home and you want to take it to work, this is good because it will stop the coffee from cooling down. Whereas would it be good if you made a coffee and then you came back a year later and wanted to drink it? Well, no, that seems a bit pointless. You might want to just invest in a kettle. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop there. Um, I hope that's made sense. But if you do have any questions on that, there are, of course, loads of other examples. And this video could have gone on for a long time. But I just wanted to cover the main points. If you do have any questions, as I say, please do send me an email using the link below or comment and I will respond to you directly. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.